Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Salt here. Today we are going to be going over the primary weapon, the Quellor. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits. Meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. That would be things like war from abilities, pets putting statuses on the weapon, things like that. We just have to test the weapon by itself built out, and I leave it up to the viewer to make their own intelligent conclusions about those external things. Like, um, uh, hey, Salt put Viral on the weapon, but I'm going to be using Nourish, so maybe I'll use a different element. Things like that. So let's get into the Quellor. So the Quellor is a primary assault rifle that's obtained through Railjack missions. Um, there's, I think each piece is like from a different... Uh, planet, possibly, if I remember correctly. So you might have to wiki that. I don't know the exact like proximas you have to go to. But it's from Railjack Missions. Um, and let's get into the build here. So, the Quellor has an alternate fire mode. And unlike a lot of weapons that have alternate fire modes, a lot of weapons they need to um, basically be built out different than their alternate fire. Like the alternate fire is built differently and the primary fire is built differently. And so they don't necessarily play well together. The Quellor is an exception to that. It actually is very good playing together with the alternate and primary fire. So uh, there's no need for me to do a alternate and primary fire uh, build for this. It's just all going to be in one build. So I'm going to go on a blank config and I'm going to show like the quirky things about the Quellor. Okay, so quirky things about the Quellor is that it's going to start in cold as an innate element. The primary fire has full IPS, so it has impact, puncture, slash, and that innate cold. And the charged fire, which is the alternate, kind of like shoots out this um, big like shotgun beam. I don't know, it's not necessarily a shotgun, but I'm going to call it a shotgun because it has fall off just like a shotgun. So it's, it's a closer ranged beam. Um, and so the alternate fire here just has impact and cold. So it does not have full IPS on the alternate fire. So the other thing to look at for the Quellor is going to be the differences in the primary and alternate fire. So if you look at the primary fire here, it has very high status chance, has very, very poor crit chance. Look at the alternate fire, it has very poor status chance, but has very, very high crit chance. So they're basically opposite of each other. Um, the other unique thing about this is the punch through. So the primary fire is going to have a 0 0.5 punch through innate. And the alternate fire is going to have a uh, full body punch through. So infinite body punch through. I don't think it actually says it here. But the charge has infinite body punch through. Um, and then the other quirky thing, and I think it's the last quirky thing, is its interaction with this mod here, Galvanized Aptitude. So on a lot of weapons, Galvanized Aptitude is additive damage, which is kind of weak. It's kind of just like serration. But on certain weapons, um, it acts multiplicatively. Now on this weapon, it is multiplicative on the alternate fire. So on the big charge shot, okay? Now, this does more direct damage per unique status affecting the target. And so if we remember what I just said, the charge shot has really bad time applying statuses because it has a low status chance. And so to bank on the multiplica multiplicativity, I don't even know if that's a word, to bank on that for the charge shot, what we're going to be doing is when we encounter a large enemy that um, you know we need extra damage on, we're just going to fire a few shots from the primary mode, which has good status chance, get a few of these stat stats on them. We're going to be switching our cold into viral when we get to the build here. So we're going to get a few of these statuses on them. And then we're going to, you know, uh, throw a uh, alternate fire shot at them. And that's going to let us bank on that galvanized aptitude. So, And that's why both modes actually work well with each other. So let's go to the build here. I'm going to go back in and out so I can get a clear data sheet on the side. Okay. So let's go through the mods. So first mod is going to be um, galvanized chamber for multi-shot. Second mod is going to be galvanized aptitude for status chance and direct damage per status type affecting the target. Remember, this is multiplicative on the alternate fire. 
Um, there's going to be another option for this slot as well. I'll get to that at the end. And that option is going to be if um, you don't do like endurance steel path. If you just do like five, ten minutes in steel path, there might be a better option for you here. Galvanized scope is going to be for crit chance. Vial acceleration is going to be for uh, fire rate. Um, remember, the weapon has, the primary already has 0.5 punch through, and the uh, alternate fire has infinite body punch through. So there's not a real reason to use prime shred. And the charge shot takes a good amount of time to charge. And so that 90 fire rate really helps you out there. Um, you probably see on the build we have internal bleeding, which requires you to have a fire rate below 2.5 to get double effect of slashes. But even with vile acceleration, if we go down to our charge mode here, our fire rate is still below that 2.5. It's 1.7. So we're still able to use the biggest fire rate mod and be below that 2.5 mark to get the uh, full value out of internal bleeding. All right, next here we have critical delay for crit chance. Vital sense for crit damage. Internal bleeding. Um, something I, I didn't say with, with the quirkiness of the Quellor is that the alternate fire, so the, you know, the big shotgun-esque kind of shot here, this produces forced impact procs up to 18 meters away. Um, I think terminal velocity might boost that those, those forced impact procs out, but I'm not really sure of that. I don't know if it just boosts the fall-off damage or if it, if it boosts out those uh, forced impact procs, but... Um, just keep that in mind. It, it might still only be 18 meters, even with um, terminal velocity on. But you're going to get forced impact procs 18 meters away and closer. So that combos very well with internal bleeding, where impact status effects have a 35% chance to apply a slash status effect. And you get double, it, double the effect when your fire rate is below 2.5, which we already said it's going to be below 2.5. So this works very well with... Um, Slow weapons with forced impact, which is exactly what this is. Next, we're going to go with malignant force for toxin. So toxin, 60-60, uh, uh, status chance, and 60 and toxin. And that is because the weapon already has cold, so we don't have to have the full vir viral setup of toxin and cold. We could just have toxin and make viral. And that'll make viral on both the alternate fire and the primary fire. In the Exilus slot, we're going to go with Terminal Velocity, and that's just because the weapon does have a uh, fall off, just like a shotgun. So Terminal Velocity is going to boost out your maximum damage range a bit. So that's why I like Terminal Velocity. There's other things that I was seeing on like forums where Tactical Reload could be good, because the weapon does have a heinous reload speed. It's not the worst in the game, but it, it's damn near close. It's pretty bad. Um, so tactical reload is an option where you can just quickly, you know, do like a little FF switch and like get an entire shot ready. Um, but I would rather have my uh, damage increase by terminal velocity than that. But that, that could be an option if you value reload speed a little bit more. Okay. Now in the arcane slot, I'm using primary merciless. I usually use primary deadhead, especially since we're going for headshots here, right? We're going for galvanic scope, we're doing headshots. Um, the reason I'm picking Merciless is because of that heinous reload speed. So Merciless is going to give us that plus 30% uh, reload speed, which is going to help a lot. So the difference between Merciless and Deadhead, they're both 360% flat damage. So there's no difference in the flat damage. Um, the time that the stacks fall off are different. So like Merciless, the stacks fall off in four seconds. You lose one stack. But each stack is only 30% damage. Deadhead, they fall off in 24 seconds. So those stacks stay on for a long, long time. But you lose 120% um, for each stack falling off. So there, it, it's a little bit different in, different in like how the stacks fall off. But it, in, at the end of the day, it's, it's very similar. You're usually picking it because of the extras underneath where the damage is. And those extras, Merciless, is going to be... I'll just pull this up here. The 30% reload speed. And primary deadhead is going to be a little bit more headshot multiplier. Hey, that would have been nice, but I, I think I'm going to value reload speed a little bit more on this weapon. Um, and then negative weapon recoil. If this was a faster firing weapon and we really needed to like stay on target, I that I might pick deadhead over merciless then. But it's not a fast firing weapon. It's a very slow weapon. So even if it has high recoil, you're going to have enough time to get your, your sights back on your target. So that's why I'm going to value merciless a little bit higher than deadhead on this one. Um, and that's re really it for the build here. I'm going to explain this galvanized aptitude slot, though. 
So galvanized aptitude is going to be extremely powerful on this weapon if you prime with the primary. Now, of course, you're not going to prime every target. You're only going to have to prime the things that are big, like Eximuses and above. Eximuses, Acolytes, Thraxes, things like that. Um, and on early Steel Path, so like probably what I'm doing in this video, you know, level 130, level 180 when we get to Lua, level 200, um, enemies are still going to die in like one shot from the alternate fire. The alternate fire is gigantic damage. So... Galvanized Aptitude really only becomes very, very powerful late in Steel Path. I shouldn't say late. I mean, I mean, the, the video you'll see today, it'll probably be very good against the Thraxes. Because so, Thraxes are always going to be tanky, even in early Steel Path. But the later you can go into Steel Path, the better this weapon gets, actually. It's a weird case. But let's say that you don't do... Steel Path Endurance. You know, you don't stay in Steel Paths for like 30 minutes, an hour plus, where Galvanized Aptitude is really going to get more of an effect. You know, you, you only do like 5-10 minute missions and you roll out. In that case, uh, Bladed Rounds, this guy right here, this will be pretty good for you. It's not going to be as strong as Aptitude, but it's going to work all the time. You no longer have to worry about priming with your primary. You could literally just do an alternate fire adventure and never even touch your primary shot then. So that's uh, that's where bladed rounds would go, just right over galvanized aptitude. But galvanized aptitude is going to give you gigantic killing potential on large enemies. That Those are usually the ones that give you trouble, like Acolytes, Thraxes, Eximuses. So that's, w that's why you have uh, a lot more strength out of galvanized aptitude, especially later in the steel path. Um, but it is effectively a dead mod slot if you're not priming. So, like, when I'm killing trash, like, during this video, when I'm killing trash, it's the be weapon's basically going to look like this. This only comes into effect when I actually prime with my primary. Um, I mean, technically, the alternate fire can prime itself, but it has such a low uh, status chance that it's not really going to be doing it. So, um, so, yeah, Blade of Rounds is an option over Galvanized Aptitude. But because this weapon is multiplicative, and because this is so powerful on large enemies, I'm sticking with this. All right. It was a bit of an over-explanation. Let me shut my mouth and maybe get to the gameplay here. Okay, so um, because we do this without external factors, I'm going to be doing this on a big, dumb Anaros with no Archon Shards that affect weapon uh, performance. No mods on the Anaros or Arcanes that affect weapon performance. And with a pet with no Sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that affect weapon performance. Alrighty, let me make sure I put that uh, mod back on so I don't go in there with only seven. Okay. Now, even though this is going to be early Steel Path, I'm going to act as if it was like later Steel Path, and I'm still going to try to prime um, Eximuses, just, so, just to like show how it works. So we'll do a 10-minute Steel Path uh, Kuva Survival. Kill some trash, kill some acolytes. Scans show Grineer harvesting. Kuba. So the primary mode is basically just a little assault rifle. And then the alternate fire mode is this uh, charge shot. Now you can't control that charge like you can't like stop that charge shot. Once you click the button to do it, it's gonna go. So those are the two uh, firing modes there. Okay, start this mission up. You're going to see me press my three once in a while just to get armor and status immunity, but that's the only thing the three does. It doesn't actually do anything with weapon performance. So every weapon's going to start off a little bit weak until you get your conditionals. So let's get our conditionals up here. So right now, I'm not priming anything. It, it would be a waste of time to prime this trash. The trash is going to die in one hit regardless. And if they don't, the slash procs will probably kill them. So right now, there's no need for me to prime with my primary fire mode. But as soon as I see an Eximus, I'm going to um, 
fire. You don't have to fire a lot. You just fire a small burst. He'll get like, you know, three, four, five uh, statuses. Actually, I think four is the max. So, like four statuses. You go to shoot the alternate fire, then he'll die from there. Because this is a punch-through weapon, you really kind of want to be um, lining targets up, so this is not like an ideal place to fight these guys. You kind of want to be in hallways. If I can get my uh, scope stacks up, you'll see red crits instead of oranges. There's, there's an Eximus there. Oh, he's dead, I think. Yeah, he died. <laughs> like I said, in early Steel Path, you may not even need to prime the Eximuses. And that's why in early Steel Path, Bladed Rounds is actually a, a pretty decent option. Because um, right now, I basically don't have a mod uh, a mod uh, on. Because it's not really coming into effect. Here we go. Here's a... Uh, I'm going to do that. Do that. And then uh, I think the, uh, the guy in front of him took his, uh, his shots. We'll try to get another Eximus in that and show it on him. It does require you to be at like somewhat high scope stacks for you to be in red crits. You're going to be mostly in oranges otherwise. I think it actually might be um, five stacks of scope for you to get reds. Let me see. What am I in right now? I'm only in two stacks of scope. Uh, maybe it's not five. But you will see yourself go down to like yellows if you don't get headshots for a while. There's an Agnes. Let me try to shoot some uh, primary shots into him. Find him up. Give him a good shot, and he's dead. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Accolade. I'm going to prime him up a little bit. You don't have to shoot very long with the primary fire, and you don't want to shoot very long because you're going to uh, waste DPS at that point. You just want to shoot a little burst, get like four statuses into him, like that, and then I'm going to go to that and go one, two, three. Three might kill him with, this, with the slashes. Let me throw another one into him. I don't even know where he is. Where is he? There he is. All right, he's dead. Four shots. You could, I could usually do it in three. Um, I might have just aimed poorly there. I didn't hit his, his head a few times. Slash procs are going to be based on the damage of your weapon. And because the damage of this uh, alternate fire is gigantic, you're going to get gigantic slash procs. I don't know why I tried to prime that trash enemy. I'm going to head to the first set of life supports here. Probably hit one or two of them. Drag the enemies here. When you need it, extraction is ready. So I was actually very pleasantly surprised um, with this weapon. I had thought it was going to... I, I had left it in my inventory for a very long time, like not really even doing anything with it. Um, like I have most of the weapons in the game, like formed up and built out. But this is one that I, I did not. I just kind of had it like sat there not doing anything. I just assumed it was going to be a regular assault rifle. I knew it had an innate element, 
But I figured it was just going to be like a, a tenant or Kuva weapon that basically gets an innate element. You know, it's just going to be like another Kuva carrot, basically. Um, but I was I was wrong, and I was uh, happily wrong because it's actually a pretty pretty decent weapon. So I can't remember who suggested this in the uh, comments because it, it was a few videos ago, and I can't remember what video it was. Um, but if you were the one that suggested it, thank you very much. This is a good weapon, and I'm uh, super happy to have built it out. So again, you don't you don't want to waste a lot of time doing a lot of primary fire. You just want to do a quick burst, quick like five round burst, then r go right back to that alternate fire, and that'll usually be enough to just one tap the uh, eggs misses in front of you. Um, honestly, right now because this is early steel path, I technically don't even need to prime them. I could just probably all fire and kill them in one shot. So the the galvanized aptitude gets stronger the longer you stay in the mission, basically. We have Malice. He's the worst Acolyte. He's going to put a Mag Bubble on me. Roll out of that Mag Bubble, and I should be safe. Try to climb him up here. Where do we go to? These guys, they confuse the hell out of me. I need to start marking these guys. There we go. That'll be easier. Maybe. Did I lose my mark? All right. Let me go hit a couple of life supports. Do I have the mag bubble on me, or is it like a... I think that's a glitch where you... You get the audio of the mag bubble still on you. All right, eh, that might be enough life support to get to ten minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll leave at ten minutes. We'll try to get some more kills so we can pump our kill count up, so we can get this weapon above average. Because th this should be an above average weapon. I believe this is. I'm gonna guess we're gonna be at five or six hundred kills. I don't think it's gonna be in the average territory. I think it's gonna be above average. When I do these tests, um, average weapons, and that would be like basic assault rifles. They usually hit about like 350 to 400 kills in 10 minutes. So we'll see where, where this guy hits. Oh my goodness, I'm out of ammo. That's the first time that happened. Okay, I might have to use an ammo pad. Um, yep, I'm going to use an ammo pad here. I did have to use one ammo pad at the end there. Just so everyone knows. Um, every time you fire the charge shot, it is 50 ammo, which is quite expensive. All right. So we're at 621 kills. That is very above average. That is extremely good. That's better than I actually thought it was going to be. Uh, is this the exit? I think it is. So 621 kills, that is extremely good. Uh, again, I, I had assumed um, before I even touched this weapon that it was just going to be a basic assault rifle. And then when I started doing a little bit of a deep dive, like in the um, uh, weird things about this weapon, like where I do my, like, my research before I make my build, um, I had noticed that it was not going to be an average weapon. It was going to be uh, quite interesting.
Alright, we're going to do a Lua Conjunction next. Lua Conjunction is going to force us to fight uh, higher level enemies, 180 to 200. We're going to fight Thraxes, which are kind of like Super Eggs misses. And they're going to be mixed enemies. They won't all just be uh, Grenier. Um, sometimes, if you've watched the Lens video yesterday, uh, we fight with the spawns, though. And the spawns can be sometimes horrible on Lua. So bad, I've actually considered maybe switching the uh, second test from Lua to something else. Any weapon without conditionals is going to start off very weak, so this is not going to be very good against these guys. Alright, so I'm going to cast my three here to get armor and status immunity, and then I'm going to start the mission up here. The Orican Neural Sentry is attempting to purge you from this place. Stand by for life support. All right, all the enemies did not spawn in the location where the life support is. So we're going to try to farm a little life supports as long as we can before we have to move locations. Yeah, these guys are already fighting with each other. I think it's those dogs that make them fight each other. I think they're all, they're all corrupted, but I think the dogs do not count as corrupted, so I think they beat the shit out of each other. That affects like spawns and affects how how they move towards um like your location because a lot of times they just straight up won't move towards your location because they're stuck in a room like beating the shit out of the dogs or the dogs are beating the shit out of them. See, that's a dog right there, and they're all beating the shit out of that dog. I'm pretty sure it's the dogs that caused this issue. The Drakmasters themselves are corrupted, but the dogs they summon are not corrupted. Can we get corrupted dogs? That's my question. What the dogs do. So far, we're doing pretty good on um, life sports. We haven't really... We're still in the 90 range. I don't want to speak too too much because yesterday was a nightmare with the lens. I, I had, like, one of my worst runs on Lua. The lens was amazing on Kuva Survival where everything was, like, grouped up nice. But on Lua, where these guys just love to stay in rooms beating the shit out of dogs, uh, it was a friggin' nightmare. Cast my three, give myself a little bit of armor status, maybe. Fill it back up to full. Yeah, we're doing really good here. I did a lot of my testing with um, uh, primary deadhead instead of primary merciless. And I really like Primary Merciless instead of Deadhead, just because of that reload speed. The reload speed is very painful on this without it. So I'm, I'm actually very happy I switched um, to Merciless here. We're going to get an early Acolyte at 3 minutes 30, which is perfect. That's what we want.
right, that was three shots plus a little bit of priming uh, primary shots. That was very quick to kill that guy. Let's try to get back up into that 90% life support range. I don't want to have to move locations. It's really good. Oh, like the heavy gunners are another good ones to prime. Uh, maybe not this guy because he's almost dead. But like they can be really tanky too. Thraxes. Let's get some priming shots on him. Two and he should die from the slash proc. Prime the first. That's basically one shot. The second one didn't connect. Well, no, actually, that's, that was two shots. The first shot wasn't primed. Then I primed him. Then I got a second shot, and that one killed him. So we got the Thraxes down super, super quick. Perfect. Let's try to get our uh, life support stabilized. And we'll try to get to 10 minutes with this. So a lot of average weapons in the game will fail this usually at five minutes. And this is this definitely passed the five minute mark. We'll see if we can pass the ten minute mark too. Passing the ten minute mark would be killing um, both Thraxes and still being at um, not red life support or like not out of life support, I should say. I'm going to head to that uh, set of life supports here. I'm try to kind of like Congo line that big group of enemies towards me here. Because I do want to hit one or two of these. All manner of Oricon technology may work here due to the Circulus's proximity. If you have a Necromech, you may use it. All right, and we will head back and kind of meet them halfway. Um, the game kind of has like a maximum amount of enemies it'll spawn. So like they won't start spawning in this room until we start killing more of them. Even the heavy gunners, like without priming right now, they're dying pretty easily. But later on, you might you're you're gonna wanna uh, prime these guys. I still have the uh, Bazmu alternate fire in the works. I need to do a little bit more uh, research on it, and then that one should be coming out uh, soon. It'll be this week. I just don't know what day this week. It might be tomorrow. It might be uh, later. But it will be coming out. It's a little bit more of a complicated weapon. Um, the alternate fire, at least. Not the primary. The primary fire is like kind of a uh, pretty basic assault rifle with a, with a little bit of a radial attack. Getting the second Acolyte here. I want to hit one life support before I fight him. That way I can just focus on the Acolyte and not have to worry about life support. I don't believe I was at full stacks and merciless there, so I, I have a little bit of my conditionals down, unfortunately. I uh, still kill him very easily, but it could have killed him a lot better if I had my conditionals up. 
It was just because I decided to run for the life support as soon as he was coming out. Almost at the 10 minute mark here. On uh, Lua Conjunction, you expect to get a little bit less kills than you got on Kuva Survival, just because you spend more time fighting uh, big dudes like Thraxes and. Uh, well, you spend about the same time fighting Acolytes, but sometimes the Acolytes come at the same time as Thraxes, which they didn't this time. They actually came at different times, which helps a lot. When they come at the same time, it's, um, it's difficult. Prime and one shot. Get my merciless stacks up. A few of these little trashes. We prime this guy. Oh shit! He, I think he just died from the first uh, shot that went through the trash. All right. So we're at 10 minutes. We killed both Raxes. Passed the uh, 10 minute test. We're at 689 kills, which I think is actually more than the uh, the Kuva survival. So this is an amazing weapon. This is a extremely powerful weapon. Um. Above average and well, well above average. Like close, to, close to the uh, really good tier, I would say. I, I need to make a tier list one day. <laughs> Start making up different words for the tiers. This is the really good tier. So definitely above average. Well, well, well above average. So. Thing is a monster. And the cool thing is, too, is that it's only going to get stronger. Like, you saw its weak form there, where I didn't really have to prime anything. It's only going to get stronger when you need to prime things. Because of uh, galvanized aptitude. So, um, in conclusion, I think the Quellor is an amazing weapon. I was extremely surprised uh, when I found out how strong it was. I really appreciate whoever um, it was that... Uh, suggested me to build this out. If it was you, make sure you leave it in the comments that it was you. I really appreciate it. Um, and thanks. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, um, give it a like. And I hope you guys have a good day. All right, bye.